Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, welcome back to our subscriber game tournament as we continue with round 1 with match 10 between the Imperial Seal versus Xun Zhong Yi. So this is a pretty thematic matchup again, because the Imperial Seal has Cao Cao, Lü Bu, Sun Jian, and if you think about it, all three of them had the Imperial Seal at one time or another, and all three of them had it sort of illegally, um, stolen, with power, or just looking from afar because he served Dong Zhuo in Lü Bu's case. And looking at the units he have, we have some very interesting choices. We have crossbowmen, we have some of the Qing Zhuo spear unit, and Xi Liang Cav for Lü Bu. Those are quite strong, um, but they are expensive, which is why we only see four of them. And then finally, some Zhan Ma Jian infantry, which is really shocking, because these units are quite pricey and in my opinion, quite bad because of their low armor. They only have about 30% armor, which is on the low end, only about 10% higher than, say, a militia unit. So I don't expect them to do that well uh, against range. They have some slight bonus against cavalry. I think five points of extra damage against uh, cavalry units and spears are plus seven or plus nine, depending on what type of spear you have. So. It doesn't really do that well there either. They're slow attack rate, but has splash attack damage. Unless you have some way in your army to boost their attack rate, I think the 15 attack rate on them is a bit too low, uh, but I just don't have a high opinion on them because they also happen to cost, I think around a thousand per unit in multiplayer. And we're playing on ultra army fund. So that's 1 15th of your army fund per unit. And since I don't rate them very highly, I think it might be a big waste of money. Uh, but looking on the right, we're led by Huang Fu Song, perhaps the righteous person who should have the Imperial Seal, uh, joined by Xun Yu and Wu Tu Gu, who has really nothing to do with the seal. Uh, but the team name is not anything to do with the seal, it's Xun Zhong Yi, so perhaps he's playing Xun Yu for some family ties, you know, 2000 years ago. And looking at the army composition, we have a full army. We have two of the Defender of Empire, I believe they're called. They're unbreakable. They're probably the best Spear Guard variant for multiplayer because they're unbreakable. Also two Slayer of Tyrants, which does extra damage against generals. And because they're, oh no, they're not the one that kill generals. They're the one that um, has splash attack, my bad. Uh, there's another, I think, Yellow Turban Cavalry that does extra damage against generals. But regardless, uh, these Cavalry units are Shot Cavalry, has Spear, has splash attack, good at clearing out crowds. We have a Pearl Dragon sighting. Now, Pearl Dragon are not rated very highly in the campaign, mainly because you have to commit quite a few reforms to get them, and by the time you get them, there are better choices like Protector of Heaven. But in this case, I don't hate them. I think Pearl Dragon, stat-wise, is quite good. They have very high melee evasion, they will last quite long in the battle, and in multiplayer setting, I think there's value to them. And finally, we have a melee uh, Militia Cavalry to round out the first retinue. Then for Xun Yu, we have a very interesting range setup. We have four archers and two repeating crossbowmen. Now, I don't rate range units very highly for multiplayer, so I'm not so sure about this. Of course, the repeating crossbowmen is here to apply suppression, and they're very good against shock cavalry, surprisingly strong. If you put up any range unit one on one against one of the most basic shock cavalry, the uh, militia lancer shock cavalry, and charge it straight ahead into the range unit, I believe only the repeating crossbowmen can actually route the unit before contact due to the suppression effect, due to the amount of arrows they can have in one volley. So they're actually not bad, even in campaign. Their short range makes them weak to other range, but in multiplayer, you very rarely run into other range units. So in this case, they might do decently you know, well. Then finally for Wu Gu, obviously the general is very strong with one of the shortest cooldown splash damage abilities in the game. Two Follower of the Flame to apply the Burning Debuff, which kills off your melee evasion. Two Wuling Fighters, which does extra bonus damage against General. So they're the ones that's going to do the extra damage against General. I believe it's 300 additional percentage added on. So four times the damage for both Armor Piercing and 
uh, base. Unfortunately, Wuling fighters only have a lot of base damage. I think their armor piercing damage is like three. That will go up to like 12, but I think they have close to like 30 uh, base damage. So that multiplied by four, it's going to be about 120 damage, which is actually super high uh, against general. So perhaps we'll see them do quite well. And then we have a tiger unit. Now, one tiger is probably okay. We have previously seen six tigers, and I think that's just paying too much for something that's not super effective. If you just want one tiger unit to maybe disrupt the enemy formation before your main army charges in, that might be a decent idea. And finally, I think we have what's called a Might of the Valley. Uh, this is a heavy axe user. They have a cool ability where before they die, I think below 50 health, they become berserk, increasing their damage. I think they don't say they have splash damage, but they might actually have splash damage because of the weapon. Because every other unit in the game that used that weapon all have splash damage. But I'm not sure about that. But they do have the berserk ability, which makes them decently strong. Uh, it doesn't add that much stat if you look at it. Their base stat's decent. It just makes them a little bit stronger. Uh, it's not going to be something that make or break them. But overall, quite an interesting assortment of units for Xun Zhong Yi. And when you have this many different types of unit, it's really a testament to your micro ability because every unit has a purpose and being able to put them to that purpose is going to be the challenge in this fight. If he's able to do it, then I think he has a really good chance of winning. But we don't know that until we see the battle. So let's hop in here and see how things play out. Alrighty, so as we load up into the battle, we see the deployment and something right off the bat interests us as Lü Bu has his cavalry hiding behind the enemy lines here, which is quite scary actually. And looking at the generals, we have level 3 Cao Cao, level 2 Sun Jian, okay. So we do have Flame the Phoenix, but hmm, I'm not sure about this. I think the ability he lost out on is the Roar, which would be quite good, but he still retained the dueling capacity, which in multiplayer you very rarely get a duel because the other player will just say no. Very high melee attack rate, good decent weapon, not a lot of damage. It's going to be a lot of Flame of the Phoenix, so I think that's fine. I don't think he's missing out on Breakable, I don't think the sword that he has will give him Unbreakable, so there's no difference there. Interesting choice of saving money there. Lü Bu is tier 3, good thing to see, because he really needs his gold weapon to get unbreakable, or else a lot of vanguards suffer from routing after losing health. Wu Tu Gu is tier 3, no surprise, really prizing his off-guard ability with only 30 second cooldown. There is 15 second duration, so it's really 45 second cooldown, but even then, this is great damage. Now, of course, everything is on the huge unit size, the 160 base, so the number is going to be slightly more inflated than the number I'm used to, which I typically play on large, so it's like 7.5k in that case. Uh, Fury, also excellent ability, just providing buffs to nearby units in terms of morale boosting, and of course, if he falls below 50% health, he will gain a boost in morale to kind of counteract the damaged morale hit, and then he will also gain 15% extra damage. In this case, those numbers can become quite high because his weapon is really good. Then we have Huang Fu Song, Hell of Arrows, third tier, nothing to see here, and Xun Yu, second tier. So he secured the ability of Ancient Wisdom, so he's using him to spot invisible units, and this can be used early on to spot out this army, because it has forest spotting. So you can't hide from him. And then turning the tide basically means if there's any one of your units that are um, going to be routing next to him, he will boost his nearby allies by extra morale points, extra damage. This is actually quite good if you have a pretty consistent way of routing units. In this case, I don't think he has. Now it's interesting that, is he rank 3 but just have silver gear? I'm curious actually because it looks like... Oh no, he's getting the boost from uh, Huang Fu Song. Huang Fu Song's third ability is actually Inspiring Surge. So he's just enjoying the boost, not that he has it. He's, he's tier two, because or else he should have a gold horse. There are strategists who will still retain just a silver weapon at tier three, but he's not one of them. Now, of course, another thing you will lose by not upgrading all the way up is you don't have as much health, uh, which is something that you got to watch out for when you don't upgrade your generals. But regardless, the army setup is not too surprising, except for the fact that he was hiding behind with cavalry. 
I wonder what uh, you know, Xun Zhongyu is going to do here with his army because he's trying to basically build this defensive setup. But I think seeing this split, if he spots them out, he has a choice. He can either wait to get encircled or dive his whole army at one of the sides, right? You can use basically your entire force to wipe out a smaller force before the other could even make it. Because if they start charging on Wu right now, there's no way help will come. These are all infantry. They won't make it. So that would be an interesting move. And if he could pressure uh, the Imperial Seal enough to just send the generals, because there would be a speed difference, and catch the general halfway with the cavalry, that would be something really amazing to pull off. But let's see what happens. And right off the way, let's see if he uses ability. He does not, even though clearly one general is missing. Right, this is when you should get super suspicion just use it, because that's why you brought him. Since Cao Cao was the leading general, so that's the only information this army has. When you load in, you only see the commanding general. So it's very likely a third general could be Yan Baihu, who is just sneaking up to you, ready to shoot a you know, poison volley into this nice looking formation. So to keep your army safe, really should just activate this right off the bat. Even though it's one use for three minutes, you just need to catch a glimpse to know what you're up against. But so far, very content to sit still. Wang Fu Song is also not moving up to try to look for a shot. Lu Bu is also very patient here. I think they're just waiting until the front line sort of get close enough to engage and then pull out when they couldn't send any units behind. Because right now, everything in the back are vulnerable to what they have here. Right? Shot Cavalry kills melee, kills melee, kills melee, kills range, kills range, kills range, kills range, kills melee cav as well. The Tigers. I mean, you're just going to have to tank the damage from one set of Tigers. You can't do anything about that. You want to charge in here, just kill off the 40, you know, Tamers afterward, just to make sure the unit's considered dead. Honestly, the only counter cav he has are the two Defender of the Empire. Even the Pearl Dragon technically doesn't have, you know, Charge Reflect unless he's set up in formation. He has Charge Negation. All right, so he's coming out to do his Poison Volley, I'm assuming. Perfect. That's decent enough. Now, maybe the cavalry that's hiding can join and help pick off the generals. And Wutugu can maybe help as well, or flank around, kill uh, kill the range. Both are good options. Cavalry go kill the range. Not happening. He's trying to flank, but he, he forgot about them after getting them here. I guess Micro and the general might be occupying his attention. They are discovered. They have to pull away. Why not go? Why not go right now? Okay, he realized the melee is ready. Can he charge it? Oh, he should draw the line. I don't think he, he's he's not. Yeah, you want to hold down shift and draw your your pathing, kind of like curling around the unit. And they pull the two cavalry on the flank, so the two crossbow is going to get a fine time shooting. The only thing is, it's two generals versus three, even though not all three are fighting. Ribu is showing up. Oh, we see a good flank coming. Okay, let's see what can happen here. Because if Wu can charge in here and just do some damage, this could really turn things around. Okay, he went after the general instead. The strategist general? That's an interesting choice. Is he gonna slap? No. So turning the tide is on because Jama Jian routed. Not surprised, Jama Jian's not strong. The cavalry's made a very clean hit here. Tiger's already been released. Tiger's running at the front line. Excellent charge. This is perfect. They got really good value there. Alright, the cavalry finally pulled out away from them and landed on one of the crossbow units. Multiple's taking on two. Rebu's taking on two. Let's see who's the stronger solo general. Cao Cao is getting killed here. We both targeting units instead of generals. Meanwhile, you know Huang Fu Song and Xun Yu is actually targeting Liu Bu, so Liu Bu is actually taking damage or returning any. So even you know even if you get chased by just the strategists, if you're not gonna hit back, you're gonna get killed. He's trying to. Okay. 
you really want your generals to kill the other generals first. You don't want to select them into units unless there's just no generals nearby. Maybe have Lu Bu go kill. Oh, Cao Cao's dead. Good. Well, Lu Bu should go maybe kill Wu Tu Bu for him. Okay, he's trying to kill the strategist again. Maybe a good pair of arrows here. Now the cavalry got their charge targets. Now they need to find new targets, not just sit here and get killed by fur dragons. All right, turning the tide is kicking in again. They weren't able to route this, and they didn't get another charge command. Yeah, they're just not getting microed here. Okay, they're getting pulled out now. They should just pull out into a routing unit, or else they're going to bounce back and just shoot them from behind. Sun Jian's also kind of fallen. Not surprised, he's only tier 2. And Lu Bu against 3 now. The cavalry's coming in to help. The crossbow units are not getting microed. Yeah, I think Imperial Seal's attention is all on saving Lu Bu right now. And his cavalry just got forgotten. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate. They got such a clean charge and then nothing came of it as the enemy kind of recovered and got their infantry back. Yeah, when you see the, the map being laid out like this, where all the units are on the edge, it means, you know, the micro has been kind of forgotten. Right, he's trying to freeze the units. Sending the last cavalry up. Because you can see the mini-map, right? You have units all over the place. They just kind of got ignored. And this one, you know, routed over here and then never moved back. Never moved back. Never really got used again. That turning the tide was, has been pretty clutch, not gonna lie. Li Bu is back to chasing units again. And you can see they're just chasing Li Bu because they just had one simple command. Hit Li Bu. And then you don't need to do anything. Oh, this is not a good target. The second he exchanged blows with them, look. He ends up losing all his melee evasion and all his shield evasion as well, and he basically becomes a free target. Okay, maybe it'll expire before he gets hit again? Okay, it, it did get expired before he hits again. But he needs to hit back on the generals, not get hit by them. It's a big difference. Just right-click. Just right-click. He's trying to clean out all the units. But getting chased like this is just waiting to die. He can't even take... Like two or three more hits. Like two hits from Sun Yo, he dies. Less than that. It's one hit now. It was one hit away. You can do all the micro against units after you kill the generals. It's a little too late. <laughs> I was trying to hit him with a bow. That's not going to happen. Oh, the cavalry is here. Right. So all his units did not get microed at all. He was microing Lu Bu this whole entire time. And uh, unfortunately, he wasn't microing them at enemy generals, which you're playing Dynasty Warrior this time and you're going after only the mobs and all the named generals are chasing after you. And that's that's the result there. A bit unfortunate. They had a, such a good you know, flank charge and then nothing came of it because the cavalry wasn't commanded to pull out after the charge to do another charge or chase away some of the unit that were semi routing, shattering, just to clean them up, get another charge in. And over here in the front, it was looking pretty decent. Uh, they caught the cavalry on the flank. The cavalry was routing. They didn't give chase because they were just placed there well. They weren't chasing into it. And then the cavalry was able to bounce back, hit one the range. I mean, in the beginning, I feel like, you know, uh, Xun Zhongyi had an opportunity with his cavalry and didn't use it. So I thought maybe the Imperial Seal could press up and push the advantage, especially with the rear charge happening. But the two side never met. And as the units collided, the micro attention went on to the generals, and the rest was kind of what we saw. So, congratulations to uh, Sun Zhong Yu for moving on, and thanks the Imperial Seal for playing. Now, let's see how the numbers actually look. So, yeah, Lu Bu got a lot of kills. The cavalry even got a lot of kills. They got some very clean charges, but they just weren't able to push that advantage, and they eventually got surrounded and killed off by not even the spirit units. There's not a lot of counter cav on this side, and you can see the pro dragon performed really, really well. 
Uh, they were kept on the left flank that was not bothered. And after you know these units picked off the targets, this unit came in and surrounded one of them and did pretty quick work of killing them. Rinse and repeat. Splash damage on these cavalry, I think pretty helpful. Uh, like I said, I think Jama Jian just not worth it. Very low armor. Pretty much just, you know, this unit made contact and did damage. But everyone else, you can't make contact. You die so fast running up. So unless you have some way to cover them, I don't think they're going to do their job, at least for multiplayer's sake. Um, the crossbow got some shots in, but eventually got overran. And these spears did a pretty good job holding the flank for them. So overall, not too bad. Uh, I don't think I saw Sun Jian actually was able to use his Flame of the Phoenix. I think um, the generals being split at the beginning and not using them to target generals, that's a very common mistake, I think. You want your generals to first target the generals if you can, um, unless you have a cavalry on them and you want to use the cavalry in for that purpose. But if the generals are running around and your general's not hitting back and just getting hit for free, everyone has gold weapons. Every hit hurts. It's not like, you know, playing campaign where you're dueling an enemy general with a bronze or like even colorless weapon and it takes them, you know, 10 hits to even lower your health. In this game, where everyone holding gold swords and gold axes, one hit, two hit, you are half health. And then you can't come back from that. But that applies to you too. So whoever can get those first couple hits on the enemy really will dictate the battle. And that's a pretty key uh, point for these uh, matchups. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this match, and we'll be back with the next one next time, tomorrow I believe. So until then, bye!